Let me first introduce uh, Shri Bhupendra Kumar, Senior BPCL Officer. I also take the pleasure in welcoming our guest, Dr. Ajinkya Navare, Faculty of the Science of Spirituality at SPJN Institute of Management and Research. And in this webinar, we will be you know, pondering upon the topic of dealing with ethical dilemmas at, at our workplace. So ethics actually is about this moral principle. So when we are faced with the ethical dilemma, these principles help us to choose the action. So if, if I am facing the dilemma that I can help somebody by breaking the rule, then should I break the rule or not? This is the dilemma. Then what, what action I should take based on what? So that basis is provided by ethics. Now, when we talk about virtues, so virtues is more like my, my own values, my disposition. And uh, I would say that it is reflected through my behavior, through my thoughts, through my actions, through the decisions. That is what we call about virtue. And integrity is about, I would say it is about being honest and committed to the principles that moral principles that we have chosen. If you see that, uh, you know, as, as a corporation, we are custodian of the public fund or the taxpayers' money, we're dealing with that. So we have a responsibility to spend each penny with wisdom and with commercial prudence. So in that kind of a situation, how do I manage my personal aspirations and align that with the corporation? There is a concept called moral reasoning. What is that? Uh, in a simple language, when we are faced with a dilemma, we choose certain actions. So suppose we have two options, option A and option B, and uh, we choose either of them. And how do we choose them? We provide some reasoning behind it. That because I think so, because I believe so, because I thought so, so I'm choosing this particular option. So based on this reason, we can say that there is a kind of hierarchy uh, in, in terms of moral values. So at the lowest uh, level is about self. So when people think about their harm, that is the lowest level. Little above is people think about their benefit. For example, suppose company has given a particular rule. People are following that rule. Why? A group of people would say that if I don't follow, I will have to face certain consequences in my appraisal. That is level one. There will be another group which says that if I do this, then probably I will be rewarded after a year because I will be considered as a good employee. That is level two because I'm thinking about my personal gain. The next level is now we are increasing my area of concern. And now I'm thinking about people around me. I'm thinking about my colleagues. I'm thinking about my, my immediate boss or, or the team with whom we are working. So that is next level. Beyond that, then we are thinking about the organization. Beyond that, then uh, people may think about uh, ethics and principles as an independent. Similarly, they can think about their, uh, uh, their professional values. So they consider their occupation to be higher than what we have. So I think it all depends upon at what level the person is thinking about. So is he putting himself first? Uh, if he or she is putting organization first in these kind of situations. So... Uh, I look at it from the intent perspective that what is the intent behind that action? So uh, the action may look to be very pro-organization, but what was the intent? Was it to, to uh, progress my own career or was it to actually help my organization? That matters the most, according to me. So how do I manage my instinct feeling, gut feeling or emotions? Or later on, apply I apply my rational thinking to justify my emotions. So when employees feel that they are being taken care of by their organization or when organization works as if they are the guardian of their employees, automatically they also feel that there is congruence of identity. So I do not remain just I, but I became identified with the organization I'm working for. So that is important and that is what we call organizational citizenship behavior. So that citizenship behavior is when I'm not just me. So for example, when we say citizen, so I'm not just touching care, but I'm also an Indian. So I carry that identity all the time. And whenever required, I express that identity. As employees also look for the organization which can help them to achieve their own personal goals. So people have different personal goals. Somebody have finance uh, as could be their uh, immediate requirement or security 
or uh, they have job aspirations as in to grow they have certain ambitions so they also look for the organization which will help them to achieve their goals and also organization is looking for people whose values are or whose aspirations are aligned with its own aspirations so it it is a two way process and training will play a vital role because training and even processes as i said will play a role where organization can display that care and and the sense of uh, being guardian to its employees that constant training constant alignment of the employees and constant interaction with the you know uh, employees of the Absolutely. organization really helps in aligning yes. and maybe shedding their personal dust you know which many a times a human being gathers during the process of their journey in their career ladder right so the training really helps i have seen in my uh, own experience that most of the people you know when they are questioned about uh, flouting some norms of the company they try to justify by saying this decision was taken in the interest of the company it was larger interest of the company the consequential benefits of this decision which presumably is unethical has gone to the corporation not me so is it really a good argument or a good driving force to take a decision like this which may appear to be in the interest of the corporation but it is unethical don't you think that we should really test a decision with the value based approach also the main anchor which is the what is the intent and am i putting myself first or am i putting company first i think that even intent is important but then uh, if we can support an evidence or we can have certain documentation for that it will be very helpful so just uh, quoting in air that no no my intentions were very good may not help you can always reach out to your seniors you can reach out to the people around you take their consensus there are ways now people are available on phone people are available on the call or there are multiple ways you can reach out to people and you can build those consensus so that uh, your intent can be ma- and of course see uh, my assumption is when my purpose is very transparent i should not hesitate reaching out to you but when there is something different in my mind then i prefer to to work alone and then say that ah ye to mera intent my intent was was for company so people can build consensus they can talk to their seniors they can talk to their team and of course uh, create some document trail which you can support if you are question that could be the way out number 1 whatever i am doing is it really wrong i mean i am okay with this so ye jo chalta hai ye ho jayega there is nothing wrong in it there is nothing wrong this is one second is i always believe that it is good for my company so what is the problem so long my company is getting benefit out of it even if i tweak a guideline or tweak a uh, you know some kind of external guideline so it it is good for my company and second is even if i am caught my seniors are going to you know condone me off that they are going to forgive me it okay whatever you have done it's okay or you know they have a belief system that i'll be safe second is that i won't be caught even if i have done i would like to uh, share some very interesting statistics on the same line which i recently okay. happened to read one report which is uh, by ey eny uh, published a global integrity report and uh, they said that this kind of belief sorry to say but it is more observant in board members or in top management people than normal employees that is what their survey talks about so they said that around 42% of the board members or 42% of the top management people of what they surveyed they felt that their unethical behavior will be tolerated by the organization okay oh. so that is a belief so i am supporting your observation with with the data when we talk about ethical decision making or dealing with ethical dilemma so for example today's topic is dealing with ethical dilemma so how or when would i deal with ethical dilemma only when i will recognize that this is a dilemma if i don't consider it as unethical or there is dilemma i don't think that there is a dilemma and that is what is happening with many people that there is a, a typical i would say that chalta hai approach this is this is normal this is conventional so let me do it or nobody will question me so i think then it is a question of the overall organizational climate and the practices that we are following in my opinion ethics or moral values or integrity should be considered as a strategic value for the organizations and when we put it in the strategy 
all our processes should be aligned with that. So are we considering values in their recruitment process? We need to ask. Are we considering, are we taking any efforts to provide them training which will sensitize them that these are the issues that one has to deal with or these kind of situations involve uh, certain dilemmas or certain moral issues. So are we providing them enough training? And most importantly, I believe that are we questioning their values or their functioning even in their performance evaluation? So are we having this kind of thing? So recently I got to uh, work with one organization. We were doing some case study with them. And there we found one very interesting practice that at every year end, they are not only looking at their KRAs, they are all their deliverables, but they are also looking at their values. So there is a kind of value audit done for employees that how they have uphold the values of the organization and overall moral value. Uh, here, I would say that the top management has a greater role to play to show that zero tolerance. And in this EY report, they have also shown that unfortunately, the top management or uh, the senior people, they are more prone to behave unethically or they have said that, okay, we don't mind behaving unethically for our career progression than youngsters. You know, it's a good sign because a few minutes back we were discussing and you mentioned that Bharat Petroleum is a very young company. So that's a good thing. You have really raised a very uh, important and valid point of uh, sort of value audit. We, we tend to take decisions which we term as there's nothing wrong in it. As we, you also stated, I also pointed out, so that also, don't you think, leads to, leads the habit of taking unethical decisions. Because, you know, you keep inculcating a culture or habit, which ultimately gets into instinctual response. manage it is a very important point that it becomes a habit and when it becomes a habit then that habit comes from a subconscious i would say uh, a belief that ye sab chal jayega. my organization may not notice it or even if they notice they uh, may not really uh, take any action and it is it is tolerated from organization's point of view organizations need to to demonstrate that zero tolerance for any deviation and rules are required that is uh, the oh, four sure, yeah. uh, human pursuits the purush is, is is not gender specific it is human beings and artha is what are human pursuit so it has artha it has a calm so we we are not saying that one should not accumulate wealth one should take pleasures or fulfill their desires that is what we call calm so there is uh, artha and calm is perfectly fine as long as there is dharma at the foundation so dharma is exactly. the anchor so what is dharma? Dharma is that wisdom, dharma is that values, dharma is that integrity, that righteousness, which is at the center. And then calm or artha is not at the cost of dharma. Then it is wrong. Then it is adharma. Now, whistleblower policy actually enables those kind of people. If you see more harm has been caused to the society by the good people's act inactivity rather than the activity of the bad people. Major issue comes is the emotional management while performing because you are so attached so highly passionate at the young age i would say to your performance or you really want to show something to the organization when my decisions become instinctual responses emotion based responses so i need to practice a rational approach also so in that case the role of seniors play a big role when somebody is really going hyper in chasing the target and trying to jump the traffic signals and assuming that nobody is watching or if somebody will watch, I will manage. Talking about pro-honesty mechanism in the organization rather than anti-corruption. I think both the mechanisms are very important in a way that anti-corruption would help to safeguard the organization from long-term consequences that this kind of if any unethical behavior happens. So that will teach people or that will help people to know what should not be done. But that is not sufficient enough. So people need to know that what they have to do. And for that, I think the training is required than just taming them down. Because training will help them, as we were discussing earlier, that first it will help them to identify 
that okay these are morally sensitive issues or these are ethically uh, challenging issues and we should have a thought we should give a thought before i take any decision so that identifying these signals the problem as we uh, you were using this example of jumping the signal the problem here is people don't realize that there is a signal or they don't recognize yeah, yeah. they don't understand <laughs> that there is a signal and they just they just drive so training will help yeah. them to let them know that there is a signal now and you have to be very careful of your speed or of the way you are driving that moral sensitivity will be developed through training and through that through honesty approach i would say and just having anti corruption would not help that so we need to have that kind of training where uh, people would know that uh, what needs to be done just training is even not important it is educating them and okay. making them more responsible is this far more important than just providing them uh, some temporary or very short lived lead training and i think that is where this education is about knowing what to be done but also why to do that or uh, or there is a, a general i would say perception that if i am following ethics i am actually i may be compromising on my financials but the numbers show something very different okay so allow me to share some very interesting research which happened on this there is a, a one institute called ethics fair in us and they declare awards every year uh, they call it world's most ethical companies and they choose some 100 150 companies every year and they are doing it for last two decades and uh, different companies across different sectors across the globe participate in that survey uh, or in that ratings and organizations are selected very happy to share that infosys wipro and tata still uh, appeared in the list uh, two years back this year infosys is there in uh, as the honorees of that award then around that one research happened with the same question that how these companies are performing compared to their competitors so these companies are getting award of best uh, ethical companies but what about their financial records and the results were fascinating that they are no less than their top competitors across different i mean there were companies from different fields so they chose they compared their financials with the competitors moreover uh, it was found that around 40% of the companies had double profitability and double financial indicators in them twice better than their competitors it means i just wanted to uh, to highlight or to break this myth that ethics or integrity or morality doesn't pay it's not true it pays but it pays in a due time in a due course okay. so people may miss out in that instant gratification that i do something so i jump the signal and i reached 5 minutes uh, early so that instant gratification you can have but then if we look at the longer journey and if we look in a long term i would say canvas it is about the character it is about the morality and integrity that has paid well in the in the long run but in terms of uh, what kind of challenges the first challenge is to remain committed uh, to have that conviction for one's values as you said to let go these small pleasures of being dishonest that That's is right. a major challenge and one has to overcome these challenges and that comes from the dedication and that comes from my commitment to my own values that i want to be very very sincere about that so that comes from that authenticity and it is also about i would just add one last point that challenges we say hardships we said but it all depends upon the perception that again there is a perception that if i follow ethics i will have i will face lot of issues it's not like that it is about how do i perceive them how do i perceive situations if i perceive situations in a very very timid way then we use a word that whatever manasthiti we have the paristhiti appears like that jaise manasthiti waise paristhiti Uh, so if my monasthiti is negative or if my monasthiti is not convinced with the values and i will start looking at the challenges that are this is what i'm facing so let us go by the convention and this ethics and morality may not pay but right. if we go by the conviction and if we go by the positive approach and we use the term called prasad buddhi so if we follow path with the prasad buddhi prasad is what we get as a prasad from the dd and we accept it gracefully prasad we accept it gracefully we don't complain yes. so if we have okay. this kind of approach in life then no challenges one can face in the path of ethics and dharma 
and I could take up a couple of questions, not too many, all the questions, but I'm sure this would at least trigger a lot of thought process in the mind of the audience as well as a lot of uh, you know right thinking people. I wish I would have continued, but we would look for more opportunities to have a conversation with you and hope have more clarity on these kind of complex uh, subjects and uh, seek guidance from uh, you who are really doing a lot of research work in these areas. And thank you so much, Dr. Eisenkamp.